Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about working cast. So we're going to start with the impression we made the last time. For this, we're going to use a vacuum mixer. A vacuum mixer is used to minimize the amount of air incorporated in the mix. Once the stone is mixed, we're ready to pour. The impression is going to be treated with the bubble blister to eliminate the surface tension. We're going to eliminate the excess of that and then we're ready to pour. We're going to apply the stone from one side and let it flow to the other side. Once we have this first layer pour, we're going to start adding a stone to get around 13 to 15 millimeters in excess over the tray. Once the stone is set, we're going to measure 10 millimeters from these gingival margins. We're going to mark it using a ruler and a red pencil. Once we have these three dots, we're going to connect them to help us to make a line. This line is going to use as a reference when we're going to start doing the trimming. We're going to repeat the same exercise on the other side. Using a model trimmer, we're going to eliminate the excess of the stone. We're going to pay attention to that line we made previously. It's important to keep the base parallel to the close of plane. In this picture, you can see that red line you place and the relation when you trim in the model. After the trimming is complete, we're going to start cleaning the borders using a buffalo knife. The idea is to get a slight taper from occlusal to gingiva. It's important to keep this surface very smooth. For this, we can use a sandpaper. This is the cast properly trimmed in the horseshoe outline with the 10 millimeters from the gingival margin. Now is the time to start identifying the size to place our double pins. For these, we're going to place reference lines. The red color reference lines are placed on the main abutments and the two neighbor teeth. Then we're going to place blue color reference lines on the interproximal areas, these blue lines are going to be the reference for doing our sewing. These reference lines should continue in the base. As you can see, the color code makes easy to identify the areas where we're going to be placing our dowel pin. In addition to this, we're going to identify two areas in the other side of the arc. So in here is 27 and 31, which is going to provide with stability for the base. We're going to use a Pindex machine to help us to fabricate the double pin channel. Here's our cast with our reference lines. 
we're going to point out in our red reference lines using the laser. And we're going to push down until the light disappears a couple times. We're going to do the same with every single red line we place. Also in the area 27 and 31. Now we're ready to load our double pins using Sinocrylate. We have created a anti-rotational feature using a round burn number 8. So we're going to put a, a little bit of Sinocrylate in the dappin dish. Now we're going to pick up one of the double pins. We're going to dip it into the cyanocrylate and we're going to place it firmly. When we do this, please pay attention to the orientation of the dowel pin. You want to have the, all of them the same orientation. The long ones in the back only one, make sure every single one of them has the long part in the buckle. Keep things organized. We're going to proceed to end now our main abutments. So we're going to continue with number 20, number 19, number 18, and in this case we have 17. When you do this, please follow your reference lines. So make sure this double pin is between the two blue lines. So now when we do this, we want to make sure those towel pins are properly seated. So I like to tap it a little bit with the, with the back of the buffalo knife. Now we're going to spray a hardener to accelerate the setting process for the cyanocrylate. Now the towel pins are stable, it's time to put the covers. When you do so, Make sure it's properly seated. It has to be all the way until it touches the base. Now is the time to make our second base. For this, we're going to place red wax at the end of those double pins. Then we're going to lubricate our first base and we're going to proceed to box using utility wax. Alternatively, we can use these base formers. For this, all we need to do is pour up some stone and place our first base down or we'll wait for the stone to set. Now it's time to make a die sewing. For this, we're going to follow our reference lines. It's important to pay attention not to damage any adjacent teeth of the prep. We're going to follow our blue color reference line with the saw until we reach our second base. We're gonna do the same for every simple reference line. With the help of a buffalo knife, we're gonna push our double pin from the second base until the die lifts up. And finally, we're gonna trim our dies. For this, we need to create a defining area in the base, and then we're gonna isolate the margin with the round burn number eight. Then we're going to mark the margin using a red color pencil. We're going to arbitrary mount this in our semi-adjustable articulator. Notice it's a wax in the area of the main abutments, 
So after it's mounted, we can remove the wax. We have the space to reach up to lift up those dies. So finally, we're gonna work in our work authorization. And today's exercise is complete. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.